Good morning, church, and happy Sunday to you all. Let's take this song even as we take the opening prayer. All the glory must be to the Lord, for he is worthy of a praise. No man on earth should give glory to himself, for all the glory must be, all the glory must be, all the glory must be. To the Lord. Amen. In Jesus' name, Lord, we thank you for today. Thank you, King of Glory, for the gift of life. Thank you, Lord, that we are alive and well today. Thank you, O oh Lord, because it's by your mercy, it's by your compassion, it's by your grace that we are here. Even if our heads were tongues, O oh Lord. There will never be enough for us to thank you because you're a good God. You're a good father. We bless your name. We worship your name. We exalt you, King of glory, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord, for the miracle of our salvation. Thank you, Lord, that we know you. Christ in us is our hope of glory. Thank you, Lord, because you leave, oh Lord, we can face tomorrow. Because you leave, King of glory, we can face anything that life may throw our way. Lord, we bless your name. We worship your name and we exalt you, oh Lord, in the name of Jesus. Lord, we commit today's service into your able hands. Sweet Holy Spirit, we invite you into our midst. Sweet Holy Spirit, we invite you to come and take your place. In the name of Jesus, thank you for the Bible study. Thank you for speaking to us through the Bible study. Thank you, O oh Lord, for giving us new insight into your word. Thank you for teaching us anew. Lord, we worship your name and exalt you in the name of Jesus. We commit every part of today's service into your able hands. We ask, O oh Lord, that you touch and speak through everyone who is officiating this service all the ministers father speak through them in the name of jesus touch them oh lord in the mighty name of the lord jesus christ use them as vessels oh lord to do your work in the name of jesus to touch our lives to touch people's lives in the name of jesus let them be let them be instruments fit for the master's use in the name of jesus that by reason of this service today there'll be new testimonies great testimonies life-changing testimonies in the mighty name of the lord jesus christ do something new in our lives oh lord come and touch us afresh in the name of jesus and i thank you for what you're doing in our lives individually and collectively as a church Thank you, Lord, because in the name of Jesus, you will continue to work wonders in our lives. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, O Lord, because it shall be well with us. It is well with our bodies. It is well with our souls. It is well with our spirits. In the name of Jesus. Be thou exalted, O Lord. Receive all the glory. Receive all the honor. Receive all the adoration in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name I have prayed. Amen.
Day Church. A Happy New Year to you once again. I hope you're well. And how is the fast going? Thanking God for his mercies and for his goodness and for his grace that sustains us and strengthens us. Let us pray before we go into the word of God. Everlasting Father, we want to thank you for your mercies and unfailing love towards us. We thank you for the opportunity, Lord, to gather in your presence this morning to hear from you, Lord. King of kings and the Lord of lords, we ask, O oh God, that this session we commit into your hand. Holy Spirit, please guide us. We'd help us to do away with every distraction and help us to key into what you have for us today. May the entrance of your word bring light onto our path. Have your way, O oh God, today and every day of our lives. In the mighty and glorious name of Jesus, we have prayed. Amen and amen. So we're continuing with the word that the good Lord has given us this month of January, which is found in the book of Isaiah, chapter 3, verse 10. If you want to give this word a title, it is, Thus says the Lord. Isaiah 3, verse 10. It says, Say ye to the righteous, that it shall be well with them, for they shall eat the fruit of their doing. Say ye to the righteous that it shall be well with them, for they shall eat the fruit of their doing. I love the way the NLT also puts this. It says, Tell the godly that all will be well with them, for they will enjoy the rich reward they have earned. When I looked at this word, two things were dropped in my spirit, two things. And one was just a reminder to ourselves of the potency of the word of God. That the word of God is powerful and word of God is alive. So this word that the Lord has given us is so powerful and is alive. Because the word of God reminds us that in Isaiah 55, verse 11, a verse that we all know very well, he says, So shall my word that go out of my mouth, it shall not return to me void, but it shall accomplish what it I please, and it shall prosper in the things for which I sent it. And we also know that the God we serve is not a man that he should lie. Or a son of man that he should repent. Has he said it? Will he not do it? Or has he spoken? Will he not make it good? That was not, that's Numbers 29 verse, Numbers 23 verse 19. We know that there's power in the word of God. That is the first thing that I see as I read this um, verse 10. So we have to hold this word. Last Sunday we were told that this is a proclamation, it's an assertion. We have to hold on to it. And speak it even beyond this month. Confess it on ourselves. Confess it on our families, on our children. Confess it into circumstances and situation that life brings our way. Because the word is forever settled. And the second thing that came to me as I look at this Isaiah 3 verse 10. The second thing that came to me is that this promise, this proclamation was made not to everybody but to the righteous. It was made to the group of people, the righteous. Because the first few lines says, say to the righteous. So this verse, this proclamation, this word of God sent to us, it's not for everybody. It's for the righteous. And that made me ask myself the question, who is the righteous? To whom this word is given? And what makes, what does it mean to be righteous? The online dictionary defines the word righteous as morally right or justifiable or to be right, especially in a moral way. Other definitions says righteous, 
defines righteous as being morally correct or acting in accord with divine or moral law, free from sin, free, free from guilt or sin. In other words, to be righteous is to obey God's commandments and live in a way that is honorable to him. It is to completely be in the right standing with God through faith in Jesus Christ and total dependence on Christ. A righteous man will put God first in his or her life and will follow God's ways and God's words just as he said it. A righteous man is totally accountable to God as he aligns his thoughts and actions to the word and to the ways of God. A righteous man will walk in righteousness, that is, according, acting in accord with divine or moral law, free from guilt or sin, living right, and being upright. Righteousness is the perfect holiness of Jesus Christ. It is the nature of God, and it is one of the attributes, it's one of the chief attributes of God, which quite simply means one who is right. Righteousness is the only standard, the only living standard, the only condition that is acceptable for us men to stand before God. Righteousness is the only acceptable standard for man to stand before God. The righteous is the one whose faith in God and the love for God causes him or her to order, order his or her life and daily living according to God's laws and ways. The righteous is the one whose faith in God and love for God causes him to order his life and daily living according to the words of according to the laws and the ways of the Lord. The scripture gives us a picture a picture of this in in the book of Psalms chapter 1. <clears throat> it says, "Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly." nor stand in the seat of the sinners, nor sit in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law he meditates day and night. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth its fruit in its season, and whose leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he does shall prosper. This is the picture that the scripture paints for us of one who is righteous, in other words, everything the righteous does stems from his or her faith in God and in the word of God. He said the word of God written in your heart, the word of God written in the forefront of your eyes, guides your feet as you go out, as you come in, in your thoughts, in your actions, in your activities, as you breathe, as you speak, in your relationship with your fellow man and in your relationship with God. The entire life of a righteous is rooted in Christ. And his entire life is directed by God's precepts because the righteous delights in the laws of the Lord. Such person, the word of God says, that whatsoever he does, he or she shall prosper. And it's important for us to note as well that the standard of righteousness here is God's standard, not man's. Because of our own as men, we cannot be deemed to be righteous before the Almighty God. No, we can't. Because of our sinful nature. Therefore, therefore, righteousness before God cannot depend on our achievement. It cannot depend on our good words, good works. It cannot depend on our hard work, our intellect, or our emotions. No. Because no one of us can live upright on our own or stand sinless by our own strength or by our own power. The word of God reminds us in Romans 3.23, 20, Romans 3, it says, all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. This is why our righteousness, you know, our hard work, our good works, cannot make us righteous before God. And Ecclesiastes chapter 7 as well, verse 20 says, indeed, there is no one who is righteous, no one who does what is right and never sins. In fact, as a matter of fact, the Isaiah said that our righteousness before God is like a filthy rag. And this takes me to the next question which I asked myself. 
Then how can a man then be righteous? How can a man be righteous? How? First John 1 John 1.9 tells us that if we confess our sins, that God is faithful and just to forgive our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we confess our sins, that God is faithful, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. You and I take on the righteousness of God. When we confess our sins, when we, ac when we confess our sins, when we accept Jesus, when we give our life to him and accept him as our Lord and Savior, it is through our faith, our faith in the Son of God, that we are made righteous. Therefore, Christ's righteousness becomes our righteousness, and all that he has becomes ours. So by the Spirit of God living in you, by the virtue of your salvation, by the virtue of you accepting Jesus as your Lord and Savior, by the virtue of the redemption which the Lord wrought for us on the cross of Calvary, we take on the righteousness of God. We cannot produce righteousness. It doesn't matter. No matter how we try, no matter how good works we've done, it is the Christ in us. It is the accepting of Christ, confessing our sin, accepting the finished work of Christ on the Calvary. That is where we get our righteousness from. Christ's righteousness becomes our righteousness. Because we couldn't produce righteousness, Christ produced righteousness for us. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 5.21, it says, 2 Corinthians 5.21, it says, For he made him who knew no sin to be sins for us that we might become the righteousness of God in him. God made Christ, who knew no sin, to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. We have a perfect example of this in the Bible. Our patriarch Abraham, his strong and unshakable faith in the Lord earned him righteousness before the Lord. The Bible tells us this in Genesis 15, 5 to 6. So when God came to Abraham... In the beginning of that verse, the verse 5, he says, And God said, and God, then, he, then he brought him outside. So he, God brought Abraham outside and said, Look now towards heaven and count the stars. If you are able to number them, he said, so shall your descendants be. And verse 6, he said, And he believed in the Lord, and he counted it to him for righteousness. Abraham's faith in the Lord. Abraham's strong and unshakable faith in the Lord. God showed him his future. He wasn't there. God showed him what his future would be, what his descendants would be. The Bible says he believed, and the Lord counted it to him for righteousness. And we know the story about, of Abraham in the Bible. Another example we found is in the book of, in the Apostle, the book of Philippians. Apostle Paul, in the book of Philippians 3, 8 to 9. He says, yes, everything else is worthless when compared with the infinite value of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord. For his sake, I have discarded everything, counting it all as garbage, so that I could gain Christ, verse 9, and become one with him. I no longer count on my righteousness through obeying the law. I become righteous through the faith in Christ, through faith in Christ. For God's way of making us right with him depends on faith. So this is the way we obtain our righteousness, through our faith in the Son of God. And we know the Apostle Paul. We know that Apostle Paul is, we know his impact in the New Testament. He wrote most of the books in the New Testament, which was a document of his journey, of his works. But he said that all this cannot gain him righteousness. We know that, you know, how he, what he went through, the churches he opened, how he went from chain to chain, prison to prison. But all that he did in the name of the Lord could not get him righteousness. It was his faith in the Son of God. And we also know that Abraham was not justified by his works. And therefore, he had nothing to boast in God's sight. He was justified by his faith in God. His righteousness was imputed just like you and I. And I love the way a commentary puts it. He said the basic meaning of righteous has to do with the conforming to the standards in religious passages. That standard is divine revelation. He says the righteous are people who have entered into covenant 
with God by faith and seek to live according to his word. The covenant that they have make them the people of God. God knows them, and because God knows them, they shall not perish. He went further to say, they may do unrighteous things at times, but they know to find forgiveness because they want to do what is right. That just captions this topic. We cannot boast of being righteous by our good works. Our righteousness is through our faith, our faith in the Son of God, our faith through the, redemp you know, through the redemptive work that Christ did for you and I. And this word that the Lord sent to us, he sent it as this time, as such a time as this, to encourage you, to encourage me, to strengthen us, his children, in the midst of all that is going on in the world. You know, people have lost their loved ones. People have lost jobs. Some people are furloughed, income reduced. In some places, no income at all. You know, people are going through rough and challenging times. There's just so much going on in our world today. But I believe that God is calling you and God is calling me up higher to ensure that we are connected to Christ and that our connection remains intact. That nothing separates us, nothing separates you, nothing separates me from the source and socket of life, Jesus Christ. I believe that the Lord brought this word for us to ginger us up, you know, for us to check that we are in faith, to check our standing with Lord. It's a higher calling to live righteously. As people who are made righteous by the faith, by our faith in Jesus, we must please him in everything we do, in our work with God, in our interaction with our fellow men, in our actions, in our thoughts. And where we fall, we go back to Christ for forgiveness because we know that in him there's forgiveness. The Bible tells us in Proverbs 21 verse 3, he said to do righteous, to do righteousness and justice is more acceptable to the Lord than sacrifice. To do righteousness and justice is more acceptable to the Lord than any sacrifice. I believe that oh, we know with all that we've seen in the recent month, for me and for you, is a reminder for us. Is a reminder to check our footing in Christ. Is a reminder to check our standing in the Lord. Is a reminder for us to check our relationship with the Lord. To ensure that we remain within this group. Because the word was specific. It says, say to the righteous. The word is for a particular group. of. It's not for everybody. It's for those who have been made righteous through Christ. So, this is the call for us to remind us again to check our relationship with God, to make sure that we remain intact. Our connection to the socket of life, Jesus Christ, remains intact. And we must ensure that at all times we are standing right with God. And it is a higher calling. That's what, how I put it. And we see that in the second and the third part of this verse, Isaiah 3 verse 10, Please, can you give me Isaiah 3, 3 verse 10 again? In the second part of, second and the third part of that word, it says, Say ye to the righteous that it shall be well with them, for they shall eat the fruit of their doing. To you and to me, to you who through faith in Christ is made righteous, our God is saying, it shall be well with you. It shall be well with you and you will eat the fruit of your doing. He's saying that in the midst of all that we are going through, in the midst of all that may be going through right now, in the midst of it all, in the midst of what you're seeing, in the midst of what is happening to you, the circumstances around you, it shall be well with you. And yet last Sunday we heard that this is a proclamation, is an assertion. And that's why I said to us at the beginning of this, I said, we must remember, remind ourselves that the potency of the word of God, that there's the power in the word of God because he himself has said that every word that comes out of his mouth shall not return void. He has spoken that it shall be well with us. So what do we do? We hold on to the word. We hold on to it. We confess it. We speak it because he who has said it will bring it to come to pass. It doesn't matter what I'm seeing. The Lord has said, it will be well with me, it will be well with you. And not only that, I will eat the fruit of my doing. That is key to me. 
He says, in that sacrifice you are making, that sacrifice, as you sacrifice for my work, as you sacrifice for your family, for your children, it shall be well with you. And you will eat the fruits of your doing. That is key. He is our burden bearer. We must remember that. God is our burden bearer. I like the way the word of God put in Isaiah 49, verse 15 and 16. He says, can a woman forget her nursing child and not have compassion on the son of her womb? Surely they may forget, yet I will not forget you. See, I have inscribed you on the palm of my hands. Your walls are continually behind, be, before me. So this is again the Lord reassuring. He said, can a woman, he said, a woman can forget their nursing child, but I will not forget you. Because I have inscribed you, he has inscribed you, he has inscribed me on the palm of his hand. And our walls, our worries, whatever our headaches, what we are going through is before him he knows. So God is saying to you, the righteous, it shall be well with you. And what that says to me, what that says to me, one is, I will honor your prayers when you call me. We know the second part, of, we know about the, uh, James 5, 16, the second part of it, it talks about the prayer of a righteous man, that the prayer of a righteous man is perfect, is, is powerful and effective. He said the effective, fervent prayer of the righteous, of a righteous man, avails much. So the Lord saying, it shall be well with you. He says, it means, I will honor you when you call. I will honor your prayers when you call. And you know that since, 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 since last year, we were told to stand on uh, 2 Chronicles 7.14 and to pray 7.14 in the morning and to pray 7.14 at night in the evening. Because the word of God is potent. And that verse says, if my people who are called by my name we humble themselves and pray and seek my face. He says, and turn from their wicked ways. He said, I will hear, I will forget, I will hear them and I will forgive their sins and I will heal their land. The effective fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. As we continue to pray for ourselves, for our nation, the Bible said the effective fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much and our prayer will avail much in the name of Jesus and looking at the the, 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 the psalmist Psalm, uh, chapter 34 verses 15 17 and 19 the bible says in verses 15 it said the eyes of the lord are on the righteous and his ears are open to their cry so what, what the lord is saying to you it shall be well with you to me that's me saying to me that the lord the eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous and his ears are open to their prayer. So whenever you cry for yourself, for your family, the Lord is watching over you and his ears are open to your prayer. Verse 17 of Psalm 34 says again, he said, the righteous cries out and the Lord hears him and the Lord delivers him from all their trouble. He didn't say some. He didn't say a few. I'll read that again. Psalm 34 verse 17. He said, the righteous cry out, and the Lord hears and delivers them out of all their problems. The Lord is saying to you and to me, it shall be well with you. Because as you call, it, as you call on him, he will hear you. Whatever that problem is, whatever that situation, whatever that circumstance, the Lord is saying to you and I, he will deliver, from, deliver us from all our troubles. Verse 19 of that same uh, Psalm 34 says, many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers them, delivers him out of all of them. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him out of all of them. And we know a good example of this in the Bible. We know the story of Job. We know what befell Job. Excuse me. In verse 1, Chapter 1 of uh, um, uh, Job, chapter 1, verse 8. The Lord boasted before, uh, boasted um, uh, uh, on, 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 for Job. He says, And the Lord said to Satan, Have you considered my servant Job, that there is none like him on the earth, a blameless and upright man, one who fears God and shuns evil? The Lord was boasting about Job, about his blameless and his uprightness. And he was boasting to, 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 to Satan. 
And then we know what happened. He was, Job's was attacked. His children, 10 of them died. His property, everything he owns. Even his friends that were meant to put his in at that point, that, you know, support him, were against him. But the same God, the same God, because his word is true. His word is forever alive. He says, and the, the righteous will cry out and the Lord will hear him and deliver him from all his trouble. The same God attended to Job. The same God answered Job. The same God delivered Job. And that same God will do the same for you, will do the same for me. He's saying to you, it shall be well with you. The Bible tells us in, verse, in the last chapter of Job, verse 10, he said, the Lord restored Job's losses when he prayed for his friend. Indeed, the Lord gave, him as, gave, him, gave Job twice as much as he had before. So the Lord did not just give him what he had, he gave him twice as much. And we go down to verse 12 of that same 42, chapter 42. He said, now the Lord blessed the later days of Job more than his beginning. He made, he had more properties, he had more children. He went down to verse 15 and he says, in that land, he said there were not found women as beautiful as the daughters of Job. Indeed, Job's later, uh, later life was even more glorious than his beginning because he remained righteous. Even in that situation that Job went through, even in that 42 account of his life there, not for once did he complain, not for once did he say anything against the Lord. Even when his wife said to him, ah, your own is too much, call, you know, cause the Lord and and, she, and he still stood still. And the Bible says that his later days, he said the Lord blessed his later days even more than the beginning. So the word of God is forever true. And the Lord is saying to me, saying to you, it shall be well with you. It doesn't, in the midst of that thing you're going through right now, it shall be well with you. Thus says the Lord, it shall be well with you, it shall be well with me. And again, the Lord saying, it shall be well with you, means to me, it says, because you will lack nothing, you will lack no good thing. You will lack no good thing because I am your God, because I am your source, because he is our God, he is our source. It shall be well with you. You will lack no good thing. The word of God tells us in Psalm 34 verse 10, he said, the young lion lack and suffer hunger, but those who seek the Lord shall lack no good thing. The young lion lack and suffer hunger, but those who seek the Lord shall lack no good thing. The Lord saying to you, saying to me, it shall be well with you because he is our source and he's assuring us and reassuring us. He's made a proclamation. It is well with them. He says, you will lack no good thing. We go further on. He says, Psalm 5 verse 2. He said, for you, O Lord, will bless the righteous. With favor, you will surround him as with a shield. For you, O Lord, will bless the righteous. So when the Lord is saying to us, it is well with them. He's saying to us, I will surround you with favor as with a shield. Psalm 5 verse 12. God will surround you, your family, with his favor with his, as a shield. God will surround you, he will surround me and your family, and those who are connected with you, with his favor and with his shield. I want to remind us about the, the, the story of Sodom and Gomorrah in the, in, the, in the Bible. When God, in, the, in Genesis 19, in the, the chapter before that was Genesis 18, because we know that Lot was Abraham's nephew, and he and his family lived in, in Sodom. The outcry came to the Lord of the crime, of the indecency of what was going on in Sodom. And God had sent his angels to go and de destroy the, the, the nation. But because he's a good God, and because of the relationship he had with Abraham, he felt, he said, I am not going to hide from Abraham what I'm going to say, what I'm going to do. So the angel of the Lord came to Abraham. And then, you know, Abraham began to negotiate with, with the Lord in, verse, in chapter 18. You know, you know, he began to negotiate because Abraham knows that his brother, his nephew Lot, lives in Sodom with his family. And he began to negotiate with the Lord. You know, what if you found 50 righteous, will you destroy the nation? God said no. Down to 10, God said no. At the end of the day, Sodom was destroyed. But before that happened, Lot, Abraham's nephew, and his family were rescued. 
The angel grabbed him by the hand and said, keep going because we have come to destroy this nation. And, they were going to, and we will not do it until you move. Because of, Abraham, because of Lot's connection with Abraham. The Bible says it came to pass. This is Genesis 19, 12 to 29. It's a long chapter. I'm not going to read it. But especially, especially verse 29. Genesis 19. He said, And it came to pass that when God destroyed the cities of the plain, that God remembered Abraham. God remembered his servant, his righteous servant, Abraham. And God sent Lot out of the midst of the overflow when he overthrew the city in which Lot had dwelt. Because of the connection of Abraham, God said, no, I will not destroy your connection. You know, because Lot was his nephew. God rescued Lot. God res and God will rescue you. God will rescue me. God will rescue anyone connected to us from danger, from whatever it is that life throws away. Because he's a true God. He's a mighty God. He's a wonderful God. The same God of yesterday, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and it is the same God today. He's still our father. The Bible makes it clear. said, and it came to pass that when God destroyed the city of the plain, that God remembered Abraham. And what did he do? He sent out Lot in the midst before he destroyed Sodom. It was the connection of Abraham, the righteous one before the Lord. So the God is saying to you and me today, it is well with you and you will eat the fruit of your doing. The Bible tells us again about the righteous. The Bible says in, verse, in, Psalm, in Psalm 92 verse 12, because we're looking at when the God says it is well, it shall be well with you. What does he mean? The Bible said the righteous shall flourish like a palm tree. He shall grow like a cedar in Lebanon. And we know the palm tree. Palm tree is one, of, is one of the trees that is so fruitful. Everything about a palm tree is fruitful. Its palm tree is tall. It stands among trees. It stands tall. It's, it lives long. It's very resilient. In wind, sometimes it might lose shape, but it's still standing. It's a very resilient tree. Palm tree is a tree that every part of it is fruitful. There we get oil from there. We get um, wine from there. We get brooms. Even people make a roof for their houses in some places, in some nations, from the palm tree. The palm tree is one of the trees that is so fruitful. Every single part of it is fruitful to us in our human society today. And this is what the Bible is liking, the word of God likens to the righteous. It says, the righteous shall flourish like a palm tree. The righteous shall be resilient. It doesn't matter what the wind blows. You will stand because he is our God. The righteous shall live long. The righteous shall produce fruit of different kind because he is our source. This is why the righteous is being likened to, the, to a palm tree. So the Lord is saying to you, he's saying to me, it shall be well with you. You will eat the fruit of your doing. Again, we look at the word, it shall be well with you means. The Bible says in Proverbs 24 verse 16, he said, for a righteous may fall seven times and rise again but the wicked shall fall by calamity. The righteous may fall seven times, but God will raise them up. God will lift them up because we are connected to him. And because he said it shall be well with us. This is for that explained in Psalm 37, where he said the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord and he delights in his ways. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. That's Psalm 37, verse 23 and 24. He said, though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down, for the Lord upholds him by his hand. Isn't that beautiful? He said, the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delights in his way. He said, though he falls, he said, he shall not be utterly cast down, for the Lord upholds him with his hands. That is so beautiful. That is so wonderful. That is so heartwarming. But this is the Lord saying to you, to you the righteous, it shall be well with you. Because I'm your source. Though you may fall, you will rise again. The word of God we read there said, a righteous may fall seven times. But he will rise again because the Lord has said it shall be well with you. Say ye to the righteous, it shall be well with you. And there are so many scriptures in the Bible. There are so many verses of scripture concerning the righteous. Too many. For me, this is a higher calling. This is a higher calling. Reminding us, 
what God expects of us. Because he is in charge. He is in control. That we must, you know, in our daily walk, check ourselves, check our relationship. Check that we are connected. We are connected to the source, to the socket of life, Jesus Christ. And that nothing, nothing removes that connection. Nothing pushes it away. That is intact. So let us be encouraged, brothers and sisters. Let us be. And let us encourage one another in this work. That is the beauty of us. Let us be encouraged and let us encourage one another. Let us hold on to the word of God as he has said it. Because he said, it shall be well with you, it shall be well with me, and you will eat the fruit of your doing. So please be encouraged. Let us hold on to the word of God. Let us confess it in the circumstances, in our circumstances, in our situation, because the Lord who has said it will bring it to come to pass. That is key. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, we want to thank you for the word that we have heard. Thank you for bringing us your word Sunday after Sunday. Thank you for this proclamation, this word you have given to encourage us, to strengthen us, even as we start off this 2020, 2021. It is the 24th day of 2021. What an awesome God you are. What an amazing God you are. What a faithful God you are. We thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your... We thank you for holding us, oh God, by your hand. We thank you for reassuring us, Lord, that it is well with us and it shall be well and it shall continue to be well with us and we will eat the fruit of our doing. Father, we thank you. Thank you for our faith in you. Thank you for the salvation of our souls. We bless and glorify your name. And Lord, I want to lift up before you, Lord, everyone who may be going through situations and circumstances right now, Lord. Lord, you know us as our faith differ so that our needs differ and so that our circumstances differ, Lord. But Lord, we thank you because we know that our walls are continually before you. And you have said that even if a mother forgets the child of her womb, you will not forget us. Daddy, we are so grateful and we give you all the glory. Thank you, Father, for everyone that is going through one situation or another. I say the word of the Lord to you. I proclaim the word of the Lord to you. It shall be well with you. And you will eat the fruit of your doing. In the mighty name of Jesus. And if you're worshiping with us today. And you would like some support. Or you want someone to walk with you. As we go. As we walk this walk of faith with Christ. Please get in touch with us through our website. Which is www.rccgnla.org www.rccgnla.org And once you give us your detail, one of us will be in touch with you so that we can guide you, so that we can walk this walk with you. God bless you all. God bless you immensely. And continue to bask in his mercies and love in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. command within you. He says, son, keep my words. Treasure my command within you. You are the way, Lord, the truth and the life. We magnify your name, Lord. Circumstances in your life. Drop close to me, you find rest. And eternity is all that set for you.
Good day, brethren. Prayers for those who had their birthday in the past week. Eternal Rock of Ages, we honor you. We thank you for your faithfulness and kindness towards your own. Thank you, according to Jeremiah 29, verse 11, your word says, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper your children, not to harm them, the plans to give them hope and a future. King of glory, we thank you because you will honor your words in the lives of your people. Thank you, King of glory, for all that you have been doing in their lives. Thank you for that which you are going to do in the new year that they've just entered, the new year that they've just started. King of glory, we cannot thank you enough for keeping them since last year up to this very day receive all the glory thank you because you will do greater and better things for them in their new year and years to come in the mighty name of jesus thank you everlasting father in Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. Happy birthday. King of glory, we want to thank you for bringing your children together. Thank you for being with them. Thank you for keeping them and upholding them. Thank you because according to 1 Corinthians 3 verse 7, the Bible says, so neither he who plants nor he who waters is anything, but only God who gives growth. Thank you because you've been with your children. You've been blessing their homes. You've been keeping them together. Father, we appreciate you and we're not taking you for granted for all that you have done for them. Father Lord Jehovah, we want to thank you again for your children according to John 15 verse 9 that says, as the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Abide in my love. Father Lord Jehovah, thank you because your children, as you have brought them together, they will abide in your love for one another in the mighty name of Jesus. They will abide in your love for you and for one another to your glory and to the shame of the devil. The only third person in these homes will be Holy Spirit. Father, we just want to say thank you because you will continue to guide them, you will continue to uphold them, you will continue to strengthen them. And all the fruits that you have blessed them with, you will keep in sound health in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you everlasting Father for all the people that have had their wedding anniversary in the past one week. Father, we say receive all the glory for in Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Uh, good afternoon, church, and a happy Sunday. I trust you and your loved ones are doing very well. God bless you. God will continue to be with you and your loved ones in the name of Jesus. As we round up the service, I want us to take a, prayer, a few prayer points. Uh, the first prayer point is for us to give thanks to the Lord. 
Uh, let's begin to give thanks to the King of Heaven, uh, the Lord of Lords, the I am that I am, the Holy One of Israel, the God that was, the God that is, the God that is to come, the Almighty. Let's just give Him glory. Let's give Him thanks. Give Him thanks. The psalmist says in Psalm 136, verse 1, So give thanks to the Lord for He is good, for His mercy and loving kindness endure forever. Oh, give thanks to the God of gods for his mercy and loving kindness and dear forever. Oh, give thanks to the Lord of lords for his mercy and loving kindness and dear forever to him who alone does great wonders for his mercy and loving kindness and dear forever. Verse 4 says, and let's be careful to, let, be careful to hear this. It says, for him who alone. So it is God alone that does great wonders. Let's begin to thank him. For the, many was, is, for the many wonders that he has done. is the God of many wonders. Let's open our mouth. Let's begin to give him thanks. Give him thanks for he is the King of kings, the Lord of lords. Give him thanks for he is the I am that I am, the only one of Israel. Give him thanks for who he is. Give him thanks, give him thanks, give him thanks for your yesterday. Give him thanks for your today. Give him thanks for your tomorrow. Give him thanks for all you know that you have, he has done for you. He has been faithful. He has been kind towards us. Father, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you, Father, for open heaven. We thank you for daily supplying our needs. We thank you, Lord, for your church. We thank you for every man, every woman, and every child. We thank you, Father, for our spouses. We thank you, O oh Lord, for husbands. We thank you for wives. We thank you for our elders. We thank you, we thank you, we thank you. We thank you for roof over our heads. We thank you for clothes on our back. We thank you, we thank you, we thank you. That in spite of this pandemic, Lord, you have kept us safe. You have protected us. We thank you. You have shielded us. Father, we say thank you. We thank you, Lord, for food on our table even during this period of waiting on you. Thank you for strength. Thank you for feeding us with the food of the angels. Lord, we are grateful. We are thankful. We thank you for the power of your Holy Spirit that daily guides us, leads us, directs us. Father, we thank you. We thank you for our Savior, Jesus. The healer, the deliverer, the physician. Father, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you, Lord God of Israel. For all that you have done, we thank you because it is your will that we give thanks to you. We thank you because your word says a good thing to give thanks to you. So therefore, when we don't give thanks to you, we are not doing something that is good. Father, Lord, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you. Lord, we give you glory. We give you honor. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Thank you for everything that you have done. Thank you for everything that you are doing. And thank you, Lord, for what you are about to do. We know and we can see that it is glorious. It is beautiful, Lord. We thank you for your plan for us for 2021. We thank you. We thank you. Because the plans you have for us we unfold in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. We give you honor. For in Jesus' wonderful name, we have given thanks. Amen and amen. Secondly, I want us to pray. But as we pray, I want us to pray with understanding. Number one, that God answered prayer. That is settled. Amen. Number two, that the word of God said when we call on him, he will answer us. Not only will he answer us, he will show us great and mighty things. And the Bible says, when Jesus taught the disciple how to pray, he says, our Father in heaven. So today, we're going to pray to our Father in heaven. Amen? So the second prayer point is Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father, in this new year, bless the works of my hands. Let me prosper and break through on every side. Why don't you just go ahead and begin to call on to him? He says, call on me, I will answer you. Not only will I answer you, he says, I will show you great and mighty things that you do not know. So there are things that we do not know that through this prayer, when God answers, he will show us those things. Father, we say thank you. Lord, in this new year, Father, bless the works 
of my hands. Let me prosper and break through on every side. Father, I pray for every man, every woman, and every child in your church. That Lord, you bless the works of our hands. You cause us to prosper and break through on every fight, on, on every side. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord, that in this new year, in the name that is above every other name, the name of your son, Jesus Christ, you will bless the works of our hands. You will cause us to prosper and break through on every side. Thank you for answers to prayer. For in Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Amen and amen. Number three, we're going to pray and say, Father, my Father in heaven, give me my family, my friends, my loved ones, the wisdom and open doors to achieve all their dreams and desires this year in Jesus' name. Pray and pray fervently. Pray from the comfort of your home. Pray this prayer. Your Father in heaven is hearing you. Let him hear the voice of your words. Let him hear your prayers. Open your mouth and pray and say, Father, give me my family, friends, loved ones, the wisdom and open doors to achieve all our dreams and desires this year, 2021, in the name of Jesus. My Father, my God, I call upon you that you will give me, my family, my friends, my loved ones, the wisdom and open doors to achieve all our dreams and desires this new year, 2021. Thank you, Lord, for answers to prayer. For in Jesus' blessed name, we have prayed. Amen and amen. Number four, we're going to pray and say, Father, my Father in heaven, let my family, my friends, my loved ones, and your church not lack this new year in the name of Jesus. Let every one of our needs be divinely met this year in Jesus' name. Oh, I want you to pray that prayer fervently. Believe that God is more than able to supply all our needs in the name of Jesus. So therefore, go before him and say, Father, let me and my family, my friends, my loved ones, and your church not lack this new year. In the name of Jesus, let every one of our needs be met divinely in the name of Jesus. Father, let every one of our needs be met in the name of Jesus. Thank you, everlasting Father, for in Jesus' wonderful name we have prayed. Amen and amen. Number five, we're going to pray. My Father in heaven, guard my heart, O Lord, so I can make the right decision at every point in our life, in my life. This new year, in Jesus' name, you're going to pray to your heavenly Father and say, Father, guard my heart, O Lord, so I can make the right decisions at every point in my life this new year in the name of Jesus. So open your mouth and begin to pray and say, Father, guard my heart, O Lord. Guard my heart, O Lord, so I can make, so that I will make the right decision at every point in my life this year in the name of Jesus. Father, my Father, my God, guard our hearts in the name of Jesus so we can make the right decision at every point in our lives this, this new year in the name of Jesus. Thank you, precious Lord, for in Jesus' precious name we have prayed. Amen and amen. Number six, we're going to say, Father, let the new year bring about sunshine, let it bring joy, let it bring peace to me, my family, your church, every man, every woman, every, every, everyone in the name of Jesus. So open your mouth and pray and say, Father, let the new year bring about sunshine, let it bring about joy, let it bring about peace to me, to my family, to your church. To every man, to every woman, to every child in the name of Jesus, my Father and my God, let this new year bring about sunshine in the name of Jesus. Let it bring about joy. Let it bring about peace to me, my family, your church in the name of Jesus. Father, I say thank you. I thank you, Lord, for causing this year to bring about sunshine, to bring about joy, to bring about, about peace, and to bring about abundance in the name of Jesus. Thank you, righteous Father, for in Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Amen and amen. Number seven, we're going to say, Father, this new year, let our dreams, our wishes, and our visions come to pass. Open your mouth and pray. Pray this prayer in the name of Jesus. God will answer you. God hears you. Open your mouth and say, Father, 
Father, my Father in heaven, in this new year, let all our dreams, our wishes, and our visions come to pass. May our desires come to pass this new year in the name of Jesus. May your desires come to pass this new year in the name of Jesus. Father, I thank you. I give you glory, Lord. For in Jesus' wonderful name, we have prayed. Amen and amen. And finally, we're going to pray and go to prophesy to our lives that in the name of Jesus, it is well. It is well with us. It is well with our family. It is well with our children. It is well with our jobs. It is well with, with this nation. It is well with the church. Declare. Make a declaration. Brothers and sisters, make a declaration. There is power in your tongue. Open your mouth and begin to make a, a prophetic declaration. Open your mouth and say, it is well with you. It is well with you. It doesn't matter what is going on. It is well with you. It doesn't matter what the news may be. It is well with me. It it is well with me. Temitopa, it is well with me. Marco Tori Baba. It is well with my family. It is well with my wife. It is well with my children. It is well with your church. It is well with this nation in the name of Jesus. It is well, Lord. It is well. It is well. Father, it is well. It is well. You are my God. It is well. Father, I am running to you, O oh God. And as I'm running to you, O oh God, I'm declaring that it is well. It is well in the name of Jesus. According to your word in Isaiah 3 verse 10 that it is well, oh God for your church it is well for this nation it is well it is well, it is well, it is well because we know that you are in control Lord and we know that with you nothing is too hard Father we thank you, we bless you Lord, we give you all the glory for in Jesus wonderful name we have prayed Amen and Amen may the God of heaven answer you in Jesus' name and I want to pray for those that are believing God for one breakthrough or the other this year. May the God of heaven visit you in Jesus' name. May you express that breakthrough in the name of Jesus. It doesn't matter how old, how old that situation may have been. The God of all season will arise on your behalf in the name of Jesus. The on-time God, the God that is never too late, we answer you in the name of Jesus. You will testify to the goodness of the Lord this week in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. We thank you, Lord, for answers to prayer. We trust and we believe in you that in the course of this week, we will encounter you like never before in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord, that by the time we come back next week, we will all have a testimony in the name of Jesus. Thank you, righteous Father. We give you glory, Lord, for in Jesus' wonderful name, we have prayed. Amen and amen. Have a wonderful week and have a testimony filled with in Jesus' name. God bless you. Amen.